Hey, this is Lona and I don't want to do a long arm quilting work day. I am doing a quilt for a client who I adore. She's wonderful. She's a subscriber. But what I love about her is she just kind of like challenges me sometimes. <laughs> Which I need because life gets boring, you know what I mean? Life gets boring. So this challenge is me doing a custom border for her. What I had to do is I had to create a ruler so that I can custom border her border for her. Oh my God, I can't talk. These are the templates that I made because it was cheaper plexiglass and I only made myself one of these because this is for the long arming. Some of the materials you're gonna need, you're gonna need transfer paper. I cut like four or five sheets trying to get the length of the border of my client, but on transfer paper, I use scotch tape to tape it together. I also went ahead and I trimmed this paper down the size of my border so I have a little bit more accurate kind of spacing. And I use a Sharpie to mark the grid lines, meaning the grid lines are important because you know where your seam allowances are. I also allowed myself to have a half inch to the edge to trim down and also enough fabric to put the binding on as you're trying to do your design that is as accurate as it can be to the quilt that you're gonna be putting the design on. My favorite design marking tools are Papermate. It just writes so smoothly and the lead doesn't break on you, which is annoying. There you look like this. I love these. It's 0.7 millimeters. They write real beautiful. It transfers the mark really nice. They also have a colored series, which you could buy different colored leads for different things you're gonna do. I love these, okay? They're my favorite. I have a whole thing of them, I love them. If I love something, I buy a lot of it. And this is what I use probably to do like the fill designs. This is what I use to mark my line designs. And I use a Sharpie line to give me the grid marks of the quilt. What I like about Sharpie lines is that when you erase and you're trying to figure stuff out, your grid lines don't disappear, but you can erase all these lines if you wanted to. A half inch distance. Half inch distance. <clears throat> Uh, beautiful. One side to go down. Ooh, that would look. See how. So this is like a quilting design I could quilt in there. Drawing and erasing and even redoing another transfer sheet of paper is so much easier than unstitching and taking everything apart and even unmarking a quilt because you have to wet the quilt, you have to spray the quilt and then let the quilt dry. And on paper, it's just an easy do and an easy restart. So that's why I do it this way. Ignore. Let me clean it. I've already started. I'm in a weird funk. I've been in a weird funk since last week. Funky chicken. I don't know what's wrong with me. Funky chicken. I don't know what's wrong with me. I want to finish this quilt for one of my friends, and I am marking a custom quilt. I went ahead and made some templates so that I can mark the quilt and then I'm here on Adobe Illustrator doing a different um, template for the inside here and I also had something to show the client because I am putting this on her border and it's a custom border and I was just playing different designs uh, different shapes like this in the center or this on the outside all right so my favorite marking pen. 
that's a water soluble. This is air erase and sometimes it doesn't erase, but it does erase. And I bought these at Joann's. I buy a whole bag of them and I get 50% off. And these are some of my favorite. It marks quickly, but I'm also gonna share a couple other pens that someone says that they mark just as well and they work just as fine. One of the marking pens that I have used before are these, they're really fine pens. They work great, but it takes a bit for the mark to show and I'm impatient and I'm in a hurry. Now let's talk about the real so fine marking pens and the reason it's just the pen is so fine. But here, you can barely see that marking line and it does take a bit for you to start to even notice it. And sometimes you have to go back and forth for it to finally show. And I find that as a very wasteful amount of time. And a friend of mine told me to try this one out. This one. She marks really well. It's okay. It's, it's you know, she just marks. No. She just marks. See, you can still. I may do a real one time down. And she's very fine, also. So you would have to go back and forth a couple times for it to mark. This is my favorite. It's fast, quick. Of course, it does do a thicker line. If I bring you close. Love this one. I want a quarter inch here. I'm going to be mindful when I'm sewing that, that I have the space I need. So when I'm long arming it, I am going to mark. And I want a point. And then what I used is this little groove area. I don't know if you can see that. I used that to know where to start my next line. Then the same thing here. So this is me marking this quilt and I'm gonna get it ready for long arming. I'm using this beautiful quilting design and then I created this quilting design to go on the sides of this quilt. She loved it. I have it a little bit more densely quilted. Now I still need to kind of like fix some of this and kind of clean it up a little bit. I'm having some problems with my manual filthy. But um, everything can be re-stitched and unstitched. But it looks really pretty. I try to create a design on the border that came from this design. So I kind of took this part here and cut it to create what I have. I created this a specific size to fit the full center of this quilt. I had to modify my ruler. It's also, I'm learning how to do this kind of ruler work, so it was a little bit harder than I thought. I ended up putting one of these just scrap pieces of plexiglass so that I have somewhere to kind of grab, like a ledge. And then I thought, well, maybe I needed to make a big one, one of the full size. I also shrunk it down about a half inch because when you have the long arm quilting foot, it adds a quarter inch. So I should have shrunk it more, but it's fine. And so let me show you what I've done. I've done all of this and it's beautiful. It's custom so it's not perfect like a computer would do it. I've gotten a bit better about kind of like getting this shape better. Nothing like dark fabric to show all your mistakes. You know what I mean. I also quilted her more densely on the center because it was more densely quilted here. Hopefully I'm not going to struggle as much to do this area. While I quilted it, 
I made sure that I was tacking the sides down. To do a custom quilt, it takes about a day or two, or at least one full day. But because it's manual work, I can't physically custom quilt a whole quilt. Some people do it. I'm not used to that process. Some people are. Um, but I'm not that level of a quilter. Because <laughs> I've always had a computer to do the work for me, I guess. I finished custom quilting it. I didn't show really me quilting it because I was concentrating so hard. But I think I'm going to do a separate tutorial on how I did it. I am going to share how I kind of like designed it. But not necessarily how I quilted it. Because girl, this was not easy. <laughs> This was not, I have two glasses on my head. This was not as easy as I thought it would be. I don't know if I'm getting rusty on my custom quilting or what, but I also think that I didn't pick an easy design and it was really hard for me to get into the rhythm of it. And so, but let me show you the quilt, okay? 